Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is How to Learn to Code in Unity and welcome to episode 9. So this episode we're going to do a little bit of coding and we're going to display how you can switch between different objects by simply pressing a key on the keyboard. Now at this point I will actually say that this will be done in C Sharp but um, I won't be doing any more in JavaScript or Unity Script as it's known as pretty soon uh, Unity technology is going to deprecate JavaScript so everything will be done in C Sharp. But if you still want to do JavaScript, there's only a couple of subtle differences. And I'll leave a comment just below with a couple of notes about the JavaScript version. So I have a scene here. I have three cameras and I have three different objects. Now what we're going to do with this is create a script which allows us to switch between each camera to get different views. Now in our edit menu and down to project settings and input, click on the axis here. And we're going to use, um, let's use submit. So here we've got submit, we can use the return button. So every time we hit the return button, we want to be able to switch between our cameras. So to do this, let's create the C Sharp script. And you can do this in MonoDevelop or Visual Studio, it's up to you. Let's call it camera switch. And as usual, I'll explain the code as we go along. So at this point, you guys should be pretty comfortable with what you're doing in creating the variables. So for C Sharp, as we do, we have public game object, and we'll have first cam. Next one, we'll have the second cam, so public game object, second cam, semicolon. And then finally, we'll have public game object third cam and the final thing we're going to want to do here is have an integer so public int and let's have cam mode so we do not need the void start we'll be using void update for part of it and we'll also be creating an i enumerator and as you already know Hopefully, uh, an I enumerator is used when we want to, for example, start a coroutine and perhaps wait just a frame or two just for the game to catch up on itself. So the idea of what's going to happen here is in void update, we want to be able to, when we press the uh, return button, which is the enter key or whatever you want to call it, we change our camera mode. So if, in brackets, input dot get button down so this is testing whether we're getting the button down that we're actually pressing the keyboard and in brackets and quotes we have submit if you have your own personal key set up for example if you've already got something set up as the word camera for the c button then that's how you would do it and open curly bracket now what we need to do is check if the cam mode is set to two. The reason we see if it's set to two is because we have three camera modes, zero, one, and two. And if it is two, then the next one is gonna be zero. So we have to make sure that it changes that. And we can do that in an if statement. So if, in brackets, cam mode is double equals, remember that's a double equals there, to two, close bracket, and open curly bracket, then we need to set the cam mode to zero semicolon and then close curly bracket but on top of that we also need to create an else statement because it may not always be two it may be zero and it may be one so we need to create the else statement right there to allow us to add one if it isn't equal to two so then we do cam mode plus equals one semicolon and then we can close that else statement and then just before we close the original if we need to start a coroutine and a coroutine is something that we can run and also have a yield function in there i'm sure we spoke about it before so that's start coroutine and in brackets we'll call it cam change open close bracket close bracket semicolon and then hopefully we just need to do a close curly bracket to close the if statement there and then this close curly bracket will close the update 
Now at this point, especially if you're using MonoDevelop, you'll see cam change is highlighted red. That's because we haven't defined it with our I enumerator. So the way this is going to work is that each time this coroutine is run, we're going to wait for maybe 0 0.01 seconds just for things to kind of catch up and realize that we've actually pressed the key. And then we're going to have a couple of if statements which tell us which camera needs turning on and which one needs turning off. So I enumerator and we've called it cam change open close bracket and open curly bracket and now we need to yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets we'll do 0 0.01 f because it's a float remember close bracket semicolon and now what we can do is start our if statements to say this is what our camera mode is so if in brackets cam mode double equals zero so if it's in the first camera mode what we need to do is make sure our first camera is set active so first cam dot set active true semicolon and at this point we only need to put the third cam set off so third cam dot set active false the reason we're only putting the third camera as inactive is at this point to have the number zero it's impossible or rather it will be impossible to have the second camera on so on at zero the other two cameras will automatically be off anyway when we start the game because by default we're set at zero i'll explain as we go a little further on into this the next if statement is going to be cam mode double equals one open curly bracket then we need to turn the second camera on so second cam dot set active true but then we also need to turn off the first camera because we've gone from zero to one so first cam dot set active false and it works on the same principle that we're not putting the third camera set active as false either because there's no possible way for us to have the third camera active as we come on to the second camera. So finally, if cam mode double equals two, then open curly bracket and we just need to put the third cam dot set active true and the second cam dot set active false semicolon close curly bracket and then close i enumerator cam change and then the start coroutine cam change will turn to black so let's save our script so you can see here what's happening is it's kind of running through a routine each and every time so at zero it uh, turns the first camera on and the third camera off because it can only ever come to zero from the number two or when we start the game. So if camera mode turns to one, it turns the first camera off because that's the only camera that will be on and turns the second camera on. And the same for ca cam mode two, it turns the second camera off and third camera on. And you'll notice that we always put the camera on before we turn it off. It's always wise to put a camera on before you turn a camera off, simply because you may end up with a frame or two of no camera, which would just kind of create a black screen or give you an error message saying no camera uh, available in the scene. So as I say, it's always best to have the camera on before you turn it off. So heading back to Unity and the script we've written has no errors. We've got nothing down here. So what we'll do is we'll turn camera two off up here, camera three, off so we only have camera one if we press play we should be able to see that it is focusing on the cube we have there so let's create our game object into there f2 and let's just call it cam mode object and then we'll drag our c sharp script onto there and quickly set our cameras up here one two three and now when we press play we should be able to see this cam mode change when we hit enter. So you can see it's changed to camera two, camera three, back to camera one, camera two, camera three. So we can just keep hitting enter as many times as we want. 
Now it's not necessarily just cameras that this can work with. I have to use cameras as an example. I'm going to quickly show you another way of doing this. I'm going to keep the variables the same, but what I'm going to do is instead of cameras, I'm going to have the game objects. So I'm going to take this game object here, bring it over here, take this game object and bring it over here. So we have three game objects in the same place. We have the cube, sphere and cylinder, and I'm going to turn off the sphere and turn off the cylinder. So on our script now, instead of having first cam, imagine if this was the first object, second object, third object, object mode. So the first object that we want to see is the cube. The second object we'd want to see is the sphere. And the third object we want to see is the cylinder. So if we press play now, we should be able to switch between these objects. Now the effect is exactly the same at this point, but we've done it differently. You can see here, that is the objects that are cycling through and not the cameras. So if we go back and then control Z a couple of times to undo everything, just to show you how it was actually working, if we press play again, start hitting enter, you can see it's the cameras that are cycling through, but the effect is the exact same in the scene window. So that is how you can take a script and use it two different ways to get the same result. It just depends on what you feel is best. If you want to set up more cameras in a scene, then use the cameras. If it's objects you're looking for, then do it with objects. Now, as I said earlier, I'm not going to do this with JavaScript, but I'll run through a couple of things which are different. As you guys know, to define something in JavaScript, we don't use public game object. We use the var, and then we have uh, whatever it's called, colon, uh, the type. So that's anything that's different there. The start coroutine, you wouldn't really need that to be honest. You could just kind of run this here or change it to a function if you wanted to. And you wouldn't really have the need for the yield return new either. You could keep that in. And if you did, you would have to get rid of the words return and new. So they're the only real differences um, within JavaScript. But at this point, we're in episode nine and we've learned to translate between the two languages. And I feel like you guys should hopefully become quite comfortable with how C Sharp works as a language. It is much more supported in Unity. So going forward in the next episode, we are only going to deal with C Sharp, but I will also give notes each time on JavaScript, but we won't be writing any JavaScript. So guys, until the next episode, I hope you guys can work out a couple of things here and use this to your advantage in your own game. And don't forget, you can always expand this to have many, many cameras, many objects and do different things with it. So guys, until the next episode, thank you very much for watching.